I was working with one kid named Samuel, and he was in the sixth grade. And he was working on punctuation and capitalization. I noticed that what he was doing was basically just copying exactly what they had in the book. And I sort of asked him, I was like, well, why don't you read it out loud to see where the pauses are? And he just said, well, I can't read. Yeah, we're teaching, but this isn't like any teaching that we that we knew before we came here. One of the boys called me over and he was changing and he lifted up his shirt and he had like cuts and bruises all over his chest and his stomach. I said, oh, what happened? Because he wanted to show me what happened. And he said, they hit me. And I said, what do you, who hits you? And he said, at home, they hit me. And I guess that's what the bruises on his chest were. We thought that we had prepared, but there was no way to prepare for something like this. Throughout the trip, we experienced the joy and sadness that comes when trying to make a difference. Hey, we're in South Africa. Nothing else matters right now except for these kids and what we're doing. We got up around 6.30 and uh, got ready for a 7.15 pickup to the school. <laughs> Edendale is a primary school in Pretoria, which is outside of Johannesburg. It's grades RR, which stands for preschool and kindergarten, up to about 7th or 8th grade. It's a private school. Children have to pay to go there and they wear uniforms. I was a little bit surprised by how nice this school was. I kind of thought that it was going to be a little bit more run down than it was. All of the children kind of know each other. And, um, you know, since there's only one class per grade, um, they all kind of know all the teachers as they move up. So it was a really nice feeling. It felt, at least I felt very welcome. Edendale is one of the few places in these kids' lives where they can go and feel completely safe and loved. Charlotte, Sarah, and Jenna were assigned to grade RR. Lily, Emily, and Kara were assigned to grade one. Sarah, Taylor, Wendy, Catherine, and myself were assigned to grade two. Emma, Jeremy, and Nicole were assigned to grade three. And Melissa, Lizzie, Jess, and Eric were assigned to grade four. The groups were paired with a South African teacher to help them in the classroom. You know, the teacher also really appreciates us in the classroom. She has us doing things that, you know, she doesn't have enough hands to do. Grade four was the only exception. They didn't have a head teacher and had to run the classroom by themselves. And the grade fours um, are not in today. Like I said, she's absent. That's Lizzie, Eric, Jessica. We Melissa. got there and they told us that we had no teacher, so we were kind of large and in charge, if you know what I mean. We went in there and we weren't sure what to expect. We're used to subs in the United States actually following a lesson plan, but apparently here they just watch over the kids for the day. It's been kind of difficult because our teacher is not there, so we're kind of in control the whole time, and it's a lot because they're really rowdy and, I mean, they're kids. They need to, like, let out some energy. It's a little overwhelming stepping into a situation, not knowing these kids that well. We basically took over the class, so, I mean, that was a little scary. I guess the way it works there is the substitutes provided worksheets and if they finish then they just kind of watch the kids. It's a lot different than what I've experienced in the States where you know when you have a substitute obviously 
it's a lot different than when you have your normal teacher, but there's still stuff that's planned and it's very like regimented. Um, and so they asked us to take over with our activities. The substitute that was there just kind of sat there. And then at one point she told me she was going out to get tea. So if any of the kids misbehaved, I could threaten them by throwing them out of the classroom and then telling them that she would deal with them when she got back. And I was like, okay, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But I think that's how they, I mean, that's just the culture here. I think it would have been easier if I had known how a classroom worked in South Africa and how you know the structure was similar or different than the United States. None of us really knew so we were kind of just thrown in. We kind of invented some stuff to do on the fly today which was really nice like we got to go outside a little bit and I think it was good for them to be outside. I think they really liked that and then when they came inside they were much more relaxed. My name is Kali Sile. I want to write about when I first time when the first time I went to meet my friends. My mom was the first time I made friends at school <laughs> because like we were sitting down on the carpet in that class over there and then after yeah. the teacher said you must tell your name to everyone and then that's where I, 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 like, I made my friends and like the teacher laughed it like it was like a song it was like um, you have to tell your friend like when I say my name is Mali what is your name and then you say my name is what is your name like and then we made friends that way. I mean the kids were so outgoing they were so much more like energetic and boisterous than I was expecting which was great and really fun to work with I loved their energy they were all super into what we were doing wrote paragraphs about moments in personal history so something that happened in their lives that was important to them so when we're saying write a moment in your history, we mean pick one point in your We life. taught for like however many hours straight. And Melissa kind of took the lead, which was good and like somebody had to because with four of us there and like 30 some odd kids, maybe 20 odd kids, we needed some sort of a, a leader figure. Start writing your personal history. So I know a lot of you said you were going to write about your first day. I was in there and I was teaching and I kind of clicked on Miss Ross mode. There were moments where I kind of forgot where I was and I was just so energized to be in a class with them and um, to be trying out these things with them. So maybe that's not your uh, moment in history, but you're going to take whatever you wrote about, whatever you want to write about, whether it is coming to Edendale, whether it's learning to dance, whether it's your first time you rode a bicycle, Gone to soccer. Uh, there was there was one boy who pretended not to speak English for a while, and he had like some comprehension problems. And his he he told me a sentence that he wanted to say, but he couldn't write it out. And I would have to tell him the letters, and sometimes he even got the letters wrong. So he didn't speak great English, but he understood everything we were saying. <laughs>